I'm Baptiste Lopers, and uh, today I will talk about improving the performance of tiered memory systems. This is joint work with uh, Willis Van Oppel from the Uni of Sydney. So, as you probably all know, current servers have many tiers of memory, and we usually present them in a pyramid, uh, as shown on this slide. And at the top of the pyramid, you have uh, DRAM, and the advantage of DRAM is that it is super fast, but it's also very expensive, and so you don't have a lot of it. And at the bottom of the pyramid, you have the slower tier. It's much cheaper, it's plentiful, but it's also quite slow. And the goal in all of these systems is to have the data that is frequently accessed on top of the pyramid and the data that is less frequently accessed at the bottom. And the traditional approach to achieve that uh, is done in software. So you have a software daemon that monitors memory accesses and the software de daemon determines which pages are hot, which pages are frequently accessed, and which pages are cold, which pages are infrequently accessed. And then, once the software has determined what is hot and what is cold, it migrates the pages between the different tiers. Um, but now, um, in modern hardware, a different solution has become available, and this option is to handle the different tiers purely in hardware. So the way it works is that the CPU will consider the DRAM as sort of an L4 cache. And when doing a load, of, a load or a store, the CPU will first look for the data in its CPU caches. And if the data is not found in the CPU caches, then it will look for the data in DRAM. And if the data is not found in DRAM, then it will fetch the data from the slow tier. And then, obviously, on the way back, it will cache the data in DRAM and cache the data in the CPU. So what does it mean for the operating system? Uh, let me wrap things up so that we, everyone understands what I'm going to talk about. So when the tiers are managed purely in software, the operating system sees both DRAM and the slow tier, and when allocated memory, when allocating memory, it allocates data first in DRAM, and then when all the pages of DRAM have been allocated, it starts to allocate data in the slow tier. And when the tiers are handled by the hardware, all the operating system sees is that it has a lot of DRAM, but it doesn't really know if the data will be in actual DRAM or in the slow tier. So what does it mean for hot data now? Um, when uh, the tiers are managed by, uh, in software by the operating system, uh, it's possible for a hot page to be initially allocated in the slow tier, right? And here the hot pages, the frequently accessed pages, are shown in orange. And so these hot pages might stay in the slow tier forever, at least as long as the operating system doesn't take any action on them. So it means that the operating system absolutely has to profile the memory accesses to figure out which pages are accessed, and the operating system absolutely has to take actions to migrate the data to the RAM when the data is frequently accessed. And on the opposite side, when the tiers are handled in hardware, uh, well, it's done transparently by the CPU, so the data is cached in the RAM after the first access. You also have a difference in granularity. So when you manage the cache uh, in software, you can only move data at the page granularity, which means that you can only migrate data four kilobytes by four kilobytes or more, right? And in hardware, the data is handled at the cache line granularity, so the DRAM cache works 64 bytes by 64 bytes. So as shown on these slides with the color code, it seems that uh, well, having the tiers handled by hardware is better, but then if they look better, why is no one using them? And the reason is that uh, caches suffer from conflicts. So uh, current implementations of the RAM caches are done as a one-way directly mapped cache, which means that every time a cache miss happens, uh, some the data has to be brought back to the cache, and this bringing back can cause some evictions. So here, for instance, if I bring the green bit uh, to the cache, then I might 
have to evict something which may cause a write back to this load here, right? And these write backs are very expensive and very inefficient. And the issue is that uh, Linux, as it is right now, uh, is completely oblivious to the fact that it might operate on a machine that has a very large DRAM cache. And so it suffers from something sort of like a birthday paradox. So the birthday paradox is that uh, even though a year has many days, it doesn't take many students to have two students that have the same birth date. And the same is true in a cache. Even though the cache, the DRAM cache is very, very large, it doesn't take many pages to have two pages that map to the same location in the cache. And so in Linux, even if you have an application that doesn't allocate a lot of data, chances are that this data will conflict in the cache. And so the key idea I want to give in this talk is that it's actually possible to, result, to reduce the number of conflicts in a DRAM cache, and that when you do so, uh, the DRAM cache actually works better than uh, uh, managing uh, the tiers manually in software. So to reduce the number of conflicts, we have two main ideas. Uh, the first idea is to change the page allocation policy of Linux. That's what we call our static policy. So at page allocation time, we try to minimize overlaps between the allocated pages. So if you have a cache that can host n pages, we guarantee that the first n pages returned by the operating system will not conflict in the cache. And the n plus one page will conflict with exactly one other page. And then we also have a dynamic policy. So it's a daemon that monitors memory accesses. And when it finds that two pages are frequently accessed, and when these two pages map in the same location of the cache, then we have a conflict between two hot pages, and the daemon migrates one of the two pages to avoid conflicts in the cache. So this is similar to what people used to do, like the hot page detection. But in the traditional approach, people uh, monitor hot pages to migrate them in the RAM, and we, we monitor hot pages to avoid conflicts between them. So that's about it for the design of our solution. I will not go into the details of the implementation. Uh, basically, we have implemented all of that in a system that we call Johnny Cash and I will compare its performance against uh, Linux and against Himem, which is a, a system that manually manages tiered memory systems. And that was published at SOSP two years ago. And the evaluation will be done on a machine with persistent memory on the workloads uh, used in the original Himem paper. So, spoiler alert, I mean, we are actually, we outperform Linux and uh, and uh, Himem on pretty much all the applications we have tested, uh, HPC workloads, databases, and so on. All the details are in the paper. But I think what's interesting is to understand why we outperform them, right? So in order to do that, I will just present a simple micro benchmark, uh, and then I will walk through you uh, why, why uh, we outperform Himem. So the micro benchmark is very simple. We just allocate an array that is twice the size of the RAM, and we do random writes on 10% of the pages of this array. So some pages might be originally in the RAM, some may not be, right? And so first, I would like to compare the performance of uh, our static policy with the performance of Linux. So on that graph, I present the number of writes that we do per second, uh, over time, and I compare that to the speed that we would achieve if all the hot data was in the RAM, so compared to the optimal performance, if you want. And you can see that just by reducing the number of conflicts at page allocation time, we are already pretty close to optimal, right? We do 85% of the RAM speed, while Linux only does 60% of the RAM speed. And the reason is just we have reduced the number of conflicts in the cache at page allocation time, with no overhead during the runtime of the application. 
And now if I look at uh, all the solutions that use monitoring and demons, uh, that's what I show on this graph. It's a bit of a surprising graph. So here I show the performance of our solution of, of uh, the various solutions when I run the micro benchmark with either 16 threads or eight threads. And you can see that when the micro benchmark is executed with eight threads, Himem actually doesn't perform really well. And after almost three minutes of execution, it still only performs about roughly 40% of the RAM speed. And the reason for that is that Himem's performance heavily depends on its ability to detect hot pages, right? If uh, a page is accessed but is not marked as hot, then this page might stay in persistent memory forever. And, well, in the literature, you have a ton of heuristics on how to detect the frequently accessed page and uh, the infrequently accessed pages. And in the paper, we have a long section where we discuss all these heuristics, and we show that basically it's very, very hard to do a heuristic that is both accurate and has a low overhead. So basically, all the heuristics we found, they are very brittle, and they don't work in, uh, I mean, they mostly don't work, actually. Uh, and, and so, well, in the case of HIMEM, if you don't have enough threads, then, well, you, you don't have enough memory accesses going on in the machine, and so basically, the system never detects the pages as hot, and so it doesn't migrate pages, and so you have poor performance in the end, right? And in contrast to that, uh, when you use a cache, well, the caching is done transparently in hardware, and so caches tend to work well by default. Uh, a second thing that I would like to mention is that even when the hot page detection heuristics work, uh, using a cache allows reaching optimal performance faster. And the reason is that uh, in the general case, uh, hot pages, when you manage the cache by hand, they tend to be misplaced. So you have to migrate them to the RAM in order to have good performance. But when you use a cache, by default, you have very few conflicts, so you don't need to do a lot of work to reach very good performance. And I would be happy to explain that in more details during the Q&A session. The last thing I would like to mention about all of these micro benchmarks uh, is uh, about small items. So I take the same micro benchmark, allocating an array twice the size of the RAM, but then instead of having a few hot pages, I spread out the, the accessed items all over the array, which means that now most pages contain hot items, right? So it's no longer possible to fit all the pages that are frequently accessed in memory. And when doing that, uh, we can see that using a cache performs much, much, much better than uh, ma managing the, the cache by hand by migrating pages, right? And the reason is that when the cache is uh, managed in hardware, uh, the granularity is 64 bytes. And when it's managed by the operating system, it's page granularity. So caches work better with small items. Uh, before finishing the, this talk, I would like to briefly mention the limitations, because I don't want to give the impression that caches are a silver bullet and work in all situations. Uh, there are some situations in which caches uh, uh, don't perform really well, uh, most notably streaming um, workloads. So if you have an application that just streams data and doesn't reuse data, then uh, basically you, the cache is useless and it's only adding latency to the, to the performance of the application. Uh, there are possible solutions at the hardware level, but they have not been implemented right now in the existing hardware. So. In conclusion, uh, I have shown that it is possible to reduce the number of conflicts at page allocation time, or dynamically. Uh, I have shown that the traditional approaches of managing the cache are heavily dependent on their ability to detect the hot data set and the cold data set. And in opposition, caches tend to work well by default, and Anyway, in all cases, fixing conflicts in a cache is less expensive than manually bringing the hot 
pages to the run. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention, and I will be ready to answer questions in the Q&A session. Thank you.